in the digital world. Nice. Mm, this is worth it, another conversation. <laughs> yes. <laughs> All right. Uh, welcome, everyone. Good morning, wherever you are, or good afternoon, maybe. So this is the performance marketing track. I'm Ines. I'm your host. I'm a B2B marketer and a podcaster. Uh, as the session says, it's about uh, gaming marketing. So we're going to have an introduction for it. I bet the title was quite catchy. And I also I found it very interesting to know the rest of the session. Um, hosting the session today is our speaker, Peter Bombol. Hi, Peter. Hi, hi. How are you? I'm good, and you? Good, good. Uh, looking forward for the session. Um, he is the chief strategy officer at GameSet. Uh, he's an economist by education, which is quite interesting, uh, but passionate about video games and esports. Uh, he worked in different, uh, different companies, and he also... Uh, wrote different articles and lectures on the phenomenon of games and their significance for marketing, research, and media industry. Also, he's a winner of uh, IFI and Canline Awards, as well as Junior, the MIXX Award Poland and IFI Award Poland. Uh, welcome, Peter, again. And uh, yeah, the stage is yours. Yes, thanks, Ines, for this introduction. Uh, I will start uh, sharing the presentation with you and um, yep yep ready okay so uh, hi hi everyone again my name is Piotr Bombol and I'm uh, chief strategy officer and founder of GameSet a leading gaming marketing agency in the central European region and today I'm talking about uh, the gaming marketing so uh, what we uh, what we exactly do and why so many brands are obsessed uh, about gaming and why so many brands and obviously agencies uh, want want to do it uh, on their own and uh, today's presentation is meant to uh, give you a short introduction so you can start doing it on your own and hopefully this is this is what will be the the end result so uh, without further ado let's start with with this let's say real did you know that at least two out of three people aged 15 to 34 are gamers? And obviously this is quite a lot of people, especially among uh, young consumers, uh, that uh, create a, a great potential for brands. And uh, I think that um, the, the first brand in each category that is able to win the hearts of gamers will drive them, obviously drive them towards uh, the, the consumer base. And the question is, will it be your brand? And I hope that after today's presentation, you will be able to answer this uh, question positively. And before we, we go deeper into the subject, I would like to, to, to make a short pause here to offer um, a creation of, 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 of common language this is what we do with uh, all of our clients during most of our workshops when we start the cooperation, because I think that uh, common vocabulary, uh, shared uh, definition is, uh, is something that uh, enables us to move forward and, and you, to understand each other better. So with gaming, we understand uh, everything that's connected to playing, creating, watching video games. So this is like an umbrella term for everything connected with video games. And the gamers is also an umbrella term for, for all people that engage actively or passively in gaming. And I think as with this active part, the playing video games is obvious, but the, the, the passive part may not be uh, that obvious on the other hand, but um, uh, I promise that we'll get back to it um, very soon. And of course, gaming marketing is all kind of marketing communication that uh, uses the gaming phenomenon to drive business uh, results for, for brands. And the target audience is most often gamers. And to understand the potential of gaming marketing and how you can benefit from, from, from gaming, I think it's crucial to, to get the basic understanding of the potential of both the gaming world, the gaming market, the gaming industry, in terms of, of course, uh, marketing communication and also the gamers as a target group. So that's why let's start with game. As for gaming, I want you to remember after this talk that 
five key things, uh, the five key characteristics of gaming that we can map on a timeline what was, what's now, what, what's happening now, and what will be in the nearest uh, future. And this is evolution, interactivity, engagement, scale, and future itself. Let's have evolution. So the, the games we know right now uh, have been with us for over 30 years. Uh, the three-dimensional games, uh, uh, at the very beginning, they were um, uh, very personal experience because these were single player games after some time when internet uh, became more popular and uh, the access to internet became uh, more widespread and the stability of connection improved it enabled the creation of multiplayer games multiplayer modes of, of video games which led after some time to creation of competitive gaming including esport but this is not the most important part because the biggest revolution that uh, that we are experiencing right now has started some years ago with games like Fortnite. The, um, Fortnite especially revolutionized the gaming industry because you know, these games, uh, as for like Fortnite or Call of Duty Warzone, PUBG, and so on, these games were created not only to be played. They are not only meant to be played. They are meant to be watched and shared. With so here we we are seeing. A new approach to gaming and, and shift of paradigm uh, in, in gaming world where uh, gaming video content is becoming massively popular. Just to give you a perspective, in just two years between 20, uh, 20, uh, 2018 to 2020, um, time spent on watching gaming on YouTube, which at the beginning was uh, uh, already the second biggest category on YouTube, it rose. 100% in two years, so it has actually doubled. Um, and uh, this uh, huge amount of uh, video gaming content is obviously uh, is, is obviously creating the biggest potential for brands because reaching gamers for gaming content is m very easy and can be very effective. Gaming is interactivity and uh, uh, I think this is one of the probably uh, things that predestined gaming to, to be the, the entertainment of the future. Because when we look back dozens of years ago, um, all of the content was consumed passively. So uh, we had cinemas, we had television, we had uh, radio, newspapers, and so on. And of, of course, after the creation of internet, the on-demand platforms uh, appeared. So we can choose what type of content we want to consume, when, on which platform, and so on. But this is only an intermediary step towards interactivity because gaming has everything that the on-demand platform have. But also, it enables us to shape the content itself because when we play video game, the game reacts to, to, to our decisions. So, so there's a feedback loop. And also, when we play with others, we are experiencing the same. So uh if we compete with others or if we cooperate with others this completely changes the experience and we think that game the, the, the interactivity that is present in gaming is what's in the biggest demand from modern consumers because as we see in terms of uh, in the case of on-demand platforms they are trying to add interactivity um say uh, so solutions to their uh, products because and uh, this is what's, um, uh, what's in the biggest interest uh, from, from modern consumers. Gaming is an engagement. And uh, this is a, um, a result of, of a research done by Deloitte last year. And uh, the question was, what's the, what's the most preferred, uh, the favorite entertainment activity among different generations? And we can see that for Generation Z, video games are the most preferred one especially much more preferred than the traditional types of entertainment. And it shouldn't be shocking because we are seeing a trend uh, between generations. Uh, every next generation is more and more into gaming, while obviously um, being less and less into traditional media. But also, uh, gaming right now surpasses uh, 
activities like listening to music, browsing the internet, being on social media, which may be shocking, but if we look very closely, it, it has already started with millennials. So, so uh, definitely it seems that uh, gaming will be favored more and more by each new generation. And gaming is scale because there are 3 billion gamers around the world, meaning people playing every month. And of course, this is where we count all different platforms. So uh, uh, it's uh, PCs, consoles, mobiles, and so on. And these 3 billion, these 3 billion gamers mean that the, the gamers has a penetration of 41% of the total population and 65% of all internet users. And this, let's say, um, uh, percentage also apply to most of the markets. So if you know how many people are internet users on your market, then probably you can, you, you, you can estimate that two thirds of them are probably gamers. And gaming is future because uh, as, 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 as proposed here by Omnicom in the, in the report from late 2020, gaming is, is, is bound to swallow uh, the previous type uh, of media as exactly happened before uh, with internet overcoming television, television overcoming radio and so on. The reason behind it is that gaming has everything what this other media, uh, media have. And uh, what's probably even more interesting is to see um, see this uh, say half of this coming to fruition because uh, gaming is definitely becoming stronger and stronger. This is the the biggest type of entertainment and also the the fastest growing one in terms of the revenues. But also right now we are seeing the metaverse phenomenon phenomenon connected with uh, web free mega mega trend but metaverse heavily rely on on experiences from gaming because how the uh, virtual worlds are created or how the in the interaction between objects users and so on is created is exactly the derivative from gaming so 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 it seems that uh, this that the that, that, this situation is already happening. And now let's jump to the gamers, the target group. Um, so uh, you may you may wonder how many people of uh, these uh, gamers playing monthly play more often. So um, the answers are here: three uh, three quarters of people playing every month play every week. And out of these three billion people, almost half of them play every day. So you can say that there's almost 1.5 billion people playing every every day video games, which means it's not only about the scale; it's also about the frequency. And um, and we can say that if you're doing something uh, every day, this is probably your passion. And also that's why probably sometimes gaming uh, is called a crucial passion point for for consumers but also uh, i want to give you a very short introduction about the gamers before moving forward so there are three e's of gamers that we think are um, uh, crucial in understanding the, the marketing potential this is elusiveness engagement eagerness so with elusiveness there are twice as many gamers aged 18 to 45 that prefer playing video games than watching tv or movies which means they are more it's harder and harder to reach them via traditional media and this is definitely what we're seeing with our most most of our clients with across uh, dozens of, of, of accounts that uh, that we have where uh, gaming is meant to drive incremental reach in the in the uh, uh, newer newer younger generations as for the engagement and a half hours is an average playtime uh, per gamer uh, per week mm, and uh, with a huge rise of 13% uh, in 2021 but uh, just to give a, a perspective just to put it into perspective uh, between eight and enough uh, eight and uh, uh, nine hours per week is an, uh, is an average time spent on Netflix by Netflix users so if we think Netflix is engaging then we definitely need to uh, call gaming engaging as well 
and eagerness because uh, the research say that uh, gamers may be more open to marketing communication than uh, the non-gamers and what could be the reason here we think this is uh, due to the fact that gamers are very rarely uh, a direct um, uh, audience for, for 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 marketers and this is obviously changing right now but uh, but uh, it's uh, it just uh, hasn't uh, been happening on a on a much bigger scale and i promise to get back to this let's say division between passive gaming and active gaming so um right now i would say that passive gaming is becoming as important as active gaming passive gaming can be defined as uh watching video gaming content essentially so uh, it's, it's happening on youtube it's happening on twitch facebook gaming and so on while active gaming is, is just playing video games um, obviously and uh, uh, this is a huge change of paradigm that's happening already and um, we'll, 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 we'll get back to the numbers uh, afterwards but uh, i assume that uh, for most of you uh, active gaming is something that can be understood i mean maybe not all of you are gamers but you can understand why would people play video games because this is the form of entertainment a very immersive one but watching video games uh, especially watching others play video games is still a little bit confusing and i think we've been getting this question uh, a little bit too often but uh, i think right now we have we have answers to that why would people watch others play video games uh, on, on such a massive scale so let's start with with the easier easier part let's say so um, as for the esports content, which is roughly 10, maybe 15% of all gaming content, it's nothing new to, to our, for our civilization because uh, it all started in ancient times when the Olympic Games were created and people started to, to, to watch uh, uh, some kind of, some, some sort of competitions for the best athletes uh, in, in certain disciplines. And this is what we have with um, traditional sports right now. And esports is just a continuation of it. It's just, uh, it's just a, a, uh, exactly the same motives happening, but in the virtual world. Well, people want to watch the best uh, professional players. They want to cheer. They want to support their favorite players and so on. What's probably a little bit more difficult is to understand why would people watch a casual content where an influencer is playing a video game but again i think this is something that uh, the, the the answer or, or, or also lie in, in our history because even in ancient times people would pay uh, pay actors uh, who who acted on stage and this also of course later on um, and transform to the um, movie industry, television, and right now we have influencers, and influencers uh, are a, a crucial part of, 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 of this uh, gaming video content because influencers as modern celebrities uh, and idols for, for, for young generations, um, they are themselves becoming uh, very engaging, uh, but also in this case, with gaming, uh, gaming content, we have a very unique mix because we have two, probably two most of the two most important parts of entertainment of 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 of, of young generations. First is influencers. The second is gaming as the um, the most preferred uh, way to spend time. And when we mix it together, we have a very unique combination. Mm, uh, that's really attractive for, for, for these young generations. And uh, games may be um, a kind of a, a background for, for content or maybe a crucial con part of context. Uh, but of course, it, uh, it's also supported by the influencers who have natural talent, humor, character that uh, add, add to it. But uh, 
this is why a gaming video content is so massively popular. And moving forward to a very short summary of, of, of gamers, and if, if, if you want to understand what's, how, how really the gamer um, audience is structurized, I think this metaphor of pyramid is a, is a very convenient one because um, at the, the base of the pyramid, the widest part are the players, so people who play video games um, on all platforms, mostly in casual way. Then when you go up uh, to the a little bit more narrow part, there are viewers, so people who want to watch all kinds of gaming content, um, live or, or VOD, then we have um, amateurs and esports fans, so people who want to play, compete on an amateur level or watch esports. Then we have professional players, so people who play games competitively for a living. And before moving forward, just to show you the numbers, I, I would like to organize a very short poll, uh, and I just need to publish it right now. Because you know that as for players, uh, I, I mentioned that there are 3 billion people playing uh, video games every month. So the question would be right now, how many people are watching video gaming content every month, uh, knowing that 3 billion is, is, is the players? So is it for, um, yeah, I realize that uh, the, the scale is, uh, is a little bit uh, too small. So obviously this is 400 million people, 900 million people, and it's and it's uh, 1.4 billion people, 1.9 billion people. So sorry for that, but right now it's uh, it's corrected. And um, if you okay, if you uh, if you want to. Uh, vote right now, please do. Uh, I'm seeing uh, it's live, uh, so that uh, some of some of you decide to vote. And I'm 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 seeing that you are um, uh, rather uh, optimistic. Uh, so that that would probably mean I I somehow convince you that uh, that. Um, that uh, gaming content is is uh, such an important part uh, of of gaming world. Okay, so I think um, I, I can look at the, the results right now, and it seems that most of you uh, with a slight uh, okay, no, it's changing to to uh, to a draw again, but. Generally, most of you think that this is either 1.4 billion people or 1.9 billion people. And the correct answer is 1.4 billion people. So uh, so definitely this is quite a lot of people, not, not as much as, as some of you uh, think, but, I, but definitely it will change in the nearest future. So there are 1.4 billion people watching video gaming content every month and this is almost half of all gamer population and this is one of the this is the, the fastest rising part of of, of gaming community uh, as i said uh, solely on youtube the the amount of time spent on on gaming rose double in just two years uh, there are approximately 230 million people watching esports content competing on a macro level around the world, which is a little bit less than 10% of, of, of gamers. And there are maximum 50,000 people around the world that play professionally for a living. And what's great about this uh, model, this approach, is that uh, it applied to most of the markets. So uh, we checked it for Poland as well, and the, the percentages uh, remain very, very similar. For example, uh, out of um, uh, people who play video games in Poland, 60% um, of them watch video gaming content and 12% uh, are into esports. So, so this is definitely working uh, for, for many markets because we tested, uh, we analyzed other markets, but what's even more curious is that it works for the games itself. So if you think about Counter-Strike as a classical esports game, there will be much more people playing video, playing Counter-Strike on a casual level. Then there will be around half of them 
watching the content, but remember the casual content, and only around 10 to 15% of all esports players will be watching esports, CSGO esports. So I think this is very, very interesting um, to, to remember. Okay, so we right now we go to the, to the main part uh, of the presentation. So uh, how can you approach gaming gaming market? So um, I think it's, it's great to start with the main reasons that uh, we see uh, from the from the brands we talk uh, to and uh, from the from the from the briefs uh, as well. Uh, the first one is, I, I already mentioned: gaming is uh, is perceived as a way to reach younger uh, cust younger customers uh, who are more and more difficult to read via traditional media, and so we've also experienced. Um, uh, the situation with clients were uh, doing a research post factum after the campaign. We saw an incremental reach um, thanks to the gaming because um, uh, because we were able to um, um, uh, to let's say it's, uh, understand uh, it on on a more detailed basis. Uh, the second uh, the second uh, main reason would be to build closeness with the younger uh, customers because gaming is all about interactivity is about uh, engagement is about um, innovation so gaming is something fresh and it definitely gives a premium uh, for, for 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 brands um, that tap into this uh, this uh, this uh, segment uh, and the third reason would be uh, obviously the driving this this consumers from gaming towards the consumer base. And obviously, this is what all the brands need to do, especially the ones that uh, have uh, young uh, young consumers as a target group because they always need to find new ways to communicate with uh, with, with their um, with their with their audience. And how should you do it? This is a, a model that we use ourselves, like our hourglass model, where definitely if you want to do it the right way, you should start with understanding the business goals, um, the, uh, the, 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 core, the, 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 the client needs, the, the whole environment uh, uh, that, we, that we operate on uh, we, we, with, uh, with a specific brand because we believe that gaming is meant to drive business goals and it can be used for various for very different reasons it can be used to drive awareness probably this is the most obvious uh, way of using it uh, to drive awareness to to, to generate reach among uh, among specific audience but also gaming is meant to uh, lift the brand image and also is, is used for generating sales. Uh, then we move next to the, let's say, to the more detailed um, uh, situation where we analyze target group of the product, the positioning of the product, the product benefits, rational, emotional ones. And then only then we apply gaming filter to everything and try to understand what be the brand role in gaming. So what should the brand communicate to, uh, to, to, to the audience so that it's um, interesting, it's engaging, it's, uh, it's credible. This is probably the, the most important part of that. It's credible for gamers because gamers can be very picky. And uh, I believe this should be used for every situation, whether it's for a tactical, activities or for the strategic ones and only then we move forward so we understand what we want how what we want to communicate to the target group then we can plan a 360 campaign um, across different segments uh, touch points media and so on and deliver it and and, and measure it optimize it so in, in, in a very maybe it's in a tip that I can give you. If you want to find a way to create a gaming marketing campaign, definitely you should be you should find yourself in the intersection of this free circle. So first of all, it should be about product. I think 
the game gaming world can be very tempting but we always need to remember that product needs to be a part of it needs to be a hero uh, of of all the communications uh, because it has to be easily recognized and, and connected. The, the communication needs to be connected with the product if we want uh, the communication to work. Uh, then it needs to be um, part of the whole gaming world. So you need to understand what's happening in the market. What are the games that are popular? And in certain games, what's what's perceived as interesting and what's not? What are the trends? Maybe there's something new happening, or maybe we can react to, to a specific situation that's uh, that's uh, that's uh, that is changing right now. So, so definitely, it should be um, uh, deeply connected with with with, with what's uh, uh, what what's happening in the gaming world. And the target group uh, needs to, of course, uh, be analyzed as well because. Um, different segments of gamers can be very different from each other and also not not all of them are your uh, probably uh, target audience so you need to find an appropriate segment of a target group it doesn't always need to be esports fans because there may be other group that may be very interested in your product and that may find the communication that you're doing interesting and i think there has never been a better moment to do gaming marketing because what we see right now is a historical highs of people playing video games, watching gaming content, spending money on video games, and it's still a blue ocean for brands because what we are seeing right now, there are, these are only the early adopter marketers that are investing in gaming marketing, while there's right now time for early majority. So I think it's relatively easy to become a leader in, in, in specific category um, uh, as, as your brand, if you're a marketer or your client's brand, if you represent an agency. But just to uh, give you some examples of how it can be done on a very, with very different products um, from different categories and also with different, let's say, um, uh, different objectives, but most of the here mostly uh, let's say to drive awareness and drive brand image, uh, with the exception of the last one. So I prepared the four case studies of Milka. So obviously you know the brand, the, the, the chocolate bar brand, and or chocolate products uh, in general. Wendy's, uh, the QSR um, chain from United States, and Bud Light uh, beer from United States as well, and Airbus being a building company from Poland, which uh, we prepared a campaign for them. Uh, which is a very different one, but uh, I think uh, you may find it uh, interesting. So let's start with Milka. So a virtual account. Uh, we are happy to work on this case together with the creative superstars uh, from David Ma uh, Madrid, uh, the identity that's uh, behind uh, Stephen H. Burger King Challenge. And uh, what, we, what we did was a very simple approach uh, to to the current situation on the market, so it was from it's the case from early 2020, um, where people were uh, in lockdown, and uh, we we found we found a way uh, to uh, drive some interest towards an online activity uh, um, that was uh, a substitute for for an offline activity, but of course first of all it was meant to uh, build the association of the brand with this positive emotion. But obviously, uh, Easter, as you imagine, is a very important uh, sales season for chocolate uh, brands. So let's, let's watch it together. Milka is Europe's most iconic chocolate. And one of the most important moments in the year for chocolate is Easter. But in the midst of lockdown, things were going to be different. Holiday celebrations are being altered for social distancing as COVID-19 making this Easter Sunday look very different. So we decided to save the Easter egg hunt with, well, Easter eggs, literally. And where better to do that than in the most played video game during lockdown? Introducing the virtual egg hunt. Using Fortnite Creative, we asked a professional gamer to design a unique experience within the game, a recreation of our iconic Alps in a special new level 
with Easter eggs hidden all over the place by our gamer. Then we invited fans to be part of the biggest Easter egg hunt ever. Kids, parents, and gamers of all ages streamed our Fortnite map. And even top Fortnite influencers joined the hunt. Să vă urez Paște fericit și datorită unui parteneriat cu Milka, anul ăsta putem să ne jucăm Egg Hunt direct de acasă. Originally launched in Romania, the hunt was played by gamers all across Europe. Yay, another one! I got it! I found one over here! Awesome! Yes, I got one! Gotcha! Sweet! That's how Milka owned the Easter Egg Hunt. In a year, where there was no Easter egg hunt. The second case is when this uh, Super Wendy's World, um, you may remember a very well known case by Wendy's when they um, say hacked uh, Fortnite, uh, but this is a continuation of it. So, uh, so Wendy's um, idea is to tap into the interest of, of young consumers and become a tangible part of it. And I think this case study is, is a great example how brand can try to be a part of, of the gaming world. What's more, Wendy's didn't stop there because Wendy's then uh, uh, created their own Discord channel, which I really recommend. It's one of the best uh, case, uh, cases of, of, of branded channels on Discord, uh, the fastest growing um, social media platform for gamers, uh, gamers as well, but also, I just uh, I just saw uh, today that Wendy's is, is is creating their own uh, restaurant in, in in officially official meta meta metaverse, meaning the Facebook metaverse. So this is what you see to, uh, here is uh, a very interesting intermediary step uh, towards uh, like the uh, all the all the activities they are doing right now. Gaming itself is bigger than the music industry and the movie industry combined. Everyone wants in on gaming, but gamers are a tight-knit community who don't just let anyone in, especially brands. I mean, we're talking about art here, tainted by corporate advertising. But Wendy's, a restaurant known for serving fresh, never-frozen beef, isn't just any brand. Last year, Wendy herself dropped into Fortnite, destroying freezers and taking names. But Fortnite is just one game. So Wendy took her fresh, never frozen beef message to the entire gaming world. Instead of paying other gamers to play for her, Wendy played everything herself and streamed it all on Twitch. Um, guys, Wendy's has a Twitch account. Wendy's streams games over on Twitch. Each week, she created herself as a playable character, then broadcast her anti-frozen missions in new ways. In Street Fighter 4, Wendy smashed her frozen competition. In Minecraft, she destroyed ice blocks with her spatula. In Animal Crossing, she sold her freezers to the lowest bidder. And that was just the start. But Wendy didn't just play, she created. Wendy's made a series of levels in Super Mario Maker 2. Oh my god, these levels are so funny. It's <laughs> supposed to be burgers, dude. Get the f out of here. She transformed Wendy's restaurants into Mario Kart courses and custom fighting arenas. These levels are making me very, very hungry. Which inspired her community to share their own creations. So we spawn in Wendy's. And to even play as Wendy themselves. I'm Wendy from the Wendy's restaurant. If I could have a ride, that'd be great. In one year, Wendy's turned a 50-year-old brand into a gaming celebrity, created an online community with a new audience, and landed a restaurant in the top 1% of all Twitch streamers, proving that the best way to keep things fresh is to let your game do the talking. We're going to Wendy's. Yeah! Fresh never frozen beef. Okay, and the uh, third one, uh, Bud Light, an iconic uh, beer uh, from the United States, uh, has been uh, very active uh, in area of gaming and esports for quite a lot of years. And after multiple sponsorship deals, uh, for presence of event, at events, uh, working with ambassadors, they decided it's time for something new. And I think this is a great example of how a added value can be created for gamers by a brand, understanding into consideration 
what are the product benefits and uh, what does the brand product stand for and what's the context for using the product but also what can be uh, available for for the target group with nearly 10 percent of all adult gamers claiming bud light is their favorite beer don't mind if i do the brand had already become the official beer of gaming <laughs> however in a year when the conversation about consoles gaming and next gen was going to be at an all-time high we saw an opportunity to make that self-proclaimed designation one that the industry proclaimed as well we already had a self-cooling six-pack in the works that would revolutionize mobile beering so we decided to take that a step further combine some hops some flops and a projector, creating the coolest console ever, revolutionizing mobile gaming and mobile beering at the same time. The BL6. The first ever self-cooling six pack that also plays video games, that also works. Freaking nuts, dude. This thing, bro, is lit. The results were as cool as the beers in the console with 186 million media impressions, 234 placements on some of the biggest esports brands, lifestyle, and trade platforms around. The BL6 achieved what it set out to do, own the console war conversation. The BL6, the coolest console ever from the official beer of gaming, Bud Light. And last but not least, is a campaign that we did for Erbo, the, the, uh, as, as I mentioned, uh, building company from Poland. And it was a recruitment campaign. So I just invite you for, for this case study. And uh, hopefully you, you'll be inspired that it doesn't need always to be a very consumer-oriented campaign, but it can be used for employment branding or recruitment as well. Erbud is one of the five largest construction groups on the Polish market. Staff shortages are one of the main constraints on the development of this sector. Despite intensifying competition, most companies are still using less innovative ways to build their image and recruit staff. Data shows that a large proportion of students and technical graduates play video games. This is why we decided to use gaming as a tool to reach this target group. We started the campaign by supporting the largest university esports league in Poland. We didn't want to limit ourselves to basic forms of promotion. We decided to propose an activity which will connect offline and online worlds. It is worth mentioning that Halakoshiki is a unique place in Poland's capital, Warsaw. The complex, built in 1906, was one of the first significant market halls in the city after revitalization by Erbud in 2016. Now it is a vibrant place with trendy pubs, boutiques, street food, and a venue for cultural events. We encourage students to help create a dedicated Airbud map in CSGO, modeled on Warsaw's Halakoshiki. For the grand final of the project, we organized a live tournament set in the facility. The whole event took place in a professional setting and had an attractive prize pool. The company's employees also participated. As a result of our campaign using this place in gaming, more than 700 candidates applied for an internship in Airbud. This means that more than 11 people competed for one in internship post. This is a fourfold increase from 2020 when the number of applications was 180. The campaign also managed to gain a huge amount of traction on the internet. It was the first employer branded campaign on the Polish market based on the metaverse phenomenon. By translating Airbud's real life project into a map in the game, we made the brand function in the virtual world of gameplay and become a desirable first employer for students. If you're interested, you can check the Steam Workshop. Uh, the map is there if, if you want to check it yourself. So this is all for today. Thank, thank you very much. Um, you can you can reach me uh, via email. I am also uh, on, on LinkedIn if you want. But uh, right now we have uh, time for uh, for some Q and A. Yes. Yeah, uh, we did have three questions, so I will start with the one in the chat. Yes. Uh, so it says, what would you say that the future of employment would be with gaming playing an important variable? Yeah, so, <laughs> so I, I think that uh, this last case study touched, uh, touched the subject as well, because what we're seeing is, um, is an increasing interest uh, uh, in in gaming, uh, especially from 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 uh, certain categories of, of recruitment, so here you saw a campaign f meant for uh, for students uh, that uh, could apply for um, uh, internship, but we also organized some campaigns in gaming for IT professionals. I think that 
and the gaming can can be used uh, as a way to let's say lure the employee uh, new empl employees to, to to the to the company but also can be become an important part of um, if uh, let's say um, benefits uh, at work uh, not it doesn't only need to be a consoles uh, uh, in the office but also a way to organize uh, some socialization uh, we know that there are some companies that organize uh, games, uh, online games for their employees. So I think this is also a very interesting approach. Mm -hmm. uh, maybe last question quickly. My client brings in gaming laptops. How can I leverage their marketing? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, so, uh, <laughs> I, yeah, I think that... Uh, what we are seeing right now is definitely uh, kind of visible on, on, on many levels that uh, the gaming um, uh, the, the gaming equipment and the gaming hardware is present almost everywhere and is also used in the offices. But this is uh, this is also why, for example, uh, gaming laptop brands are right now uh, testing uh, how to um, how to reach the casual. Uh, gamers or maybe not even non-gamers so what we're seeing with gaming is becoming um, such um, such a massive uh, massive trend is that both um, uh, non-gaming uh, marketers want to tap into gaming but funny thing enough is that uh, the gaming companies uh, need to tap uh, into non-gamer communities as well and i think and understanding gaming marketing serves this both uh, let's say both of these uh, uh, situations Mm -hmm. All right, then uh, thank you, Piotr. That's it basically for us. And I hope it was beneficial for everyone here. Yes, thank you very much and, and, and have, a, have a good day. Stay for other talks and uh, contact me if you, if you want after, after the conference. Thank you.